Saudi Arabia appoints 34 women to leadership roles in Mecca and Medina mosques. Recently, 34 women were appointed in the leadership positions in the mosques of Mecca and Medina, widely considered to be the two holiest mosques in Saudi Arabia and in Islam as a whole. The general presidency for the affairs of the two mosques stated that the move was aimed at, quote, developing services for visitors to the holy mosques. Later, um, uh, Saudi Arabia has gradually relaxed restrictions against women in public life and granted women some rights, such as the right to enter military service, apply for a passport, and travel without a male guardian for women above 21 years old. The statement from the government agency mentioned that this move, quote, is part of the qualitative changes to the kingdom is seeking for qualified Saudi women to serve female visitors to the whole two holy mosques. Okay, how is this a how is it a leadership position? Why is it a leadership position? Like what are um, you leading? If you give me a few seconds, I can pull up the details because I don't because that is I don't know if people understand how significant that would be if it's actually a leadership position. This is um this is gonna piss so many people, Muslims off. If it's just like a job that they're calling leadership, but it's not actually leadership, when you look at the details, then there are ways to kind of whitewash this for a lot of conservative Muslims so, so that they don't get pissed. Like, oh, we well, we just need women in the women's section so that they could like manage, they could talk to the women and like, because men cannot be there, right? So that would be explained away. But if they actually have leadership positions, then I could see controversy there i could see a lot of conservative muslims just pulling their hair out people are saying so the <laughs> the technical level of these positions is not clear however in august of 2021 saudi arabia appointed two women as assistants to the head of the general presidency for the affairs of the two holy mosques just getting leadery leadership like it's getting like closer to lead the, again this is I don't know if people understand why this is so such an important issue because Explain. this is a major topic within current conservative Muslims and their resistance to modernizing that women not being in a leadership position is one of the foundational w tools of resisting modernity and liberalism and the argument over the fact that the Islam has no position of leadership for women because a lot of Muslims, a lot of liberal modernizing Muslims are trying to find scripture and Quranic texts that suggest that maybe women can lead because that's what they want because women not being able to have leadership position is comes against any, all, every and all, um, uh, modern values and a lot of these Muslims live in modern countries and they cannot be this far away with their values from the rest of society because if you understand the actual standard of our Islamic values is that women need to stay at home and only leave um, when it's necessary with the permission of their husband and by necessary I mean like they need to see their father you know and visit their father or something like that but there's absolutely there's very few cases for women leaving their house uh, unless without the accompanying of their husband for anything, a career, it's not just leadership, just women having a career is seen as un Islamic. And I've watched a lot of debates on this between Muslims constantly trying to find um, scripture. Um, and you see, you know, have the examples are constantly being refuted by conservative Muslims explaining in a way saying the modern, the modern these liberal Muslims are just. Uh, reading so much into things that is not about women leadership at all and finding their own many counter examples to show that actually is pre Islam has been very specific and very clear about the role of women in society which is to to be to to be in the household to take care of the uh, man's house and the children and raise them and they think like this is actually a, a not um, putting women down because women have a very important role in raising the child and entire society depends on the, a child's proper uh, upbringing and stuff like that. So this is a huge, but what I'm saying is that this is a huge, huge, huge controversial debate and a source of infighting between conservative Muslims and liberal Muslims, right? And now for you to have the, 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 the guardians of the holiest city 
uh, in Islamic world have like, oh, we have women as leadership positions. This is this is going to cause so much hate, so much aggression towards um, the, 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 uh, the Saudis, because this is this is seen as w- one of the most un-Islamic things you could do right at the heart of Islam, right where Islam originates from. And th- it cannot. So, again, you have to understand that we had Al Qaeda created because non-Muslims were allowed in the city of the prophet in the in the land of the prophet which is Saudi Arabia okay that is why how we started having al qaeda that's how we started a global terror network now we're having it's not just that we're allowing non-Muslims there it seems like it's run by non-Muslims right so the Saudis are being takfeared left and right by many Muslims. They're like, these are non-Muslims. The Saudi government are non-Muslims. They're doing, they are, because one one grounds for takfearing, which is basically deeming somebody a non-Muslim, is for you to um, deny uh, the hukm of Allah, the, the rulings of Allah, and enforcing r- laws that are in contradiction to Allah's laws. That is the ground for takfiring somebody and denouncing them non-Muslims, which a lot of Muslims are now being convinced that the Saudis are not Muslims. And this, the, 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 the two holy cities of Mecca and Medina in Saudi Arabia are now being run by non-Muslims, uh, which is, makes it the highest of par- priorities to liberate them. So think what that line of thinking, that would result in a lot of instability. And that's why Muhammad bin Salman is quite nervous about a lot of these Islamic groups and what they could do to him. So that's why they're very aggressive right now when it comes to completely eliminating any source of or sources of opposition and funding, by the way, funding their own scholars to go and out there in the world and put on Islamic narratives that is more in line with what the Saudis want. And that's why there's like now in the Dawah scene on YouTube, you see a lot of accusation that you're Saudi funded. Which you can see even Sajid Lipham. Oh my God! Yeah. So, for example, Sajid Lipham's YouTube videos are more in line with the version of Islam that Saudi Arabia wants, which is a very conservative Muslims that believe in things that m- conservative Muslims agree with. However, a secular version of that, as in you don't get political. Like, so you do agree. So, for example, oh. the. So you have a Sajid Lebham version of Islam, which like, yes, women should not have a position of leadership, but that's just my belief. And you don't get political. You let the ruler do what the ruler want, wants to do. Oh, wow. You, you just keep that as your personal belief. That is the version of Islam. So the version of Islam that Saudi Arabia wants to sp- spread around is not like, I, you know, the conservative version, the Salafi version. So because people like Salafi version, that seems very conservative. That seems very as um, very orthodox. But you, no, but it is very conservative, but is non-interfering conservative, and that's what the Saudi government likes, and that's what wow. they're funding. For. Yeah, and that's why you see a lot of accusations are like, "Oh, you're funded by the Saudi." So, guys, what I'm telling you is that it's not us going out and telling Muslims like, "Oh, you're funded by the Saudis." Muslims are going around conservative Muslims are accusing other conservative Muslims by you're being funded by the Saudis. That's where we are at right now. So, yeah. Wow. Um, oh, my gosh. Well, Secular Sakai shows up in the live chat, and the first thing he does is give us a $2 super chat to announce that he just gave us another $50 to our GoFundMe fundraiser. Oh. Wow. Thanks what an so entrance <laughs> Thank just you so comes much. in boom oh. wow amazing sakai thank you so so much you are so generous it's really incredible yeah amazing mm-hmm. um quickly i do want to read a comment by d um d is saying i don't understand why women want to be part of a religion that presses them oppresses them and says that their minds are deficient Hopefully they are inside plotting to destroy. <laughs> well, I mean, I, the Muslims who agree with this, they think like um, they're happier this way. The Muslim woman who agree with this, they're like, you might 
the the reason why you might be offended by it is because your mind has been brainwashed by this liberal world that has made you believe that women should be in these leadership positions and this position and you are so brainwashed your liberal mind is so brainwashed that when somebody suggests that maybe women are ha happier in a different kind of setting you're just so offended because you can't imagine a different world right so that's their argument so that but, but they're saying like well you could keep being offended about thinking that women are being oppressed in islam but we know that this is this is what makes women happier like women taking care of children not having a career taking care of their husband uh women you know being submissive to their husband you might be offended by your you liberals might be offended by that but that's just how allah has created us and we know that that's what makes us happy and that has that's what makes a family function so that is a, again that's not my philosophy i'm just saying that's how they would respond to you right yeah. so yeah, and um, D is also requesting that you do reviews of Sajid Lipa on Secular Journal. The, the the problem with that D is that that might get so nuanced and detailed that a lot of people would not understand, and I don't know if if people want me to go. It would be like two hour videos rather than half an hour videos. So I don't know if I mean that's that, the kind of content that I enjoy, but I'm a nerd. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know, but I just don't know how much how much how much I'm, I'm trying to grow that channel so i don't know how much i could get into that much level yeah, of detail yeah, yeah. and find an audience for it yeah it's a constant dance yeah you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free too sexy to show most of it here on youtube we draw muhammad hindu goddesses sexy hijabi art jesus mother mary japanese god greek gods and much much more click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art